Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Studio 78 podcast. I am your host, Nishe Snow, and you can find me on nishesnow.com. That is N-A-C-H-E-S-N-O-W.com. Thank you for all the feedback for the last episode with Bailey Hancock on how to figure out your next career move. If you haven't checked it out, you can go over to nishesnow.com slash 18. Or of course, if you go to the Apple's podcast player or in Stitcher and look up Studio 78, you will find it. And that's episode 18. But um, I've heard from several of you that some of you guys even listen to it twice. And so that's a good indication to me too for like what type of folks to have onto the podcast in the future. So thank you. Thank you for your feedback. And I hope, um, you know, I continue to have like useful episodes like that. And also now Bailey says like, Hey, if you have any questions, head on over to her website and just send her a note and she would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. All right. So before we get to the artist Kendra Dandy, I have one favor to ask you. Please head on over to nishesnow.com slash newsletter and sign up so you can get free goodies and tutorials and find out what I'm up to. And also make sure you're getting notified about the latest podcast. So please go over there. Again, that's nishesnow.com slash newsletter. And okay, so today's episode, I have Kendra Dandy. Some of you guys may know her uh, by name, but some of you all may have just seen her patterns in different places. So she's a very humble artist. It's so funny in talking to her. She's like very nonchalant, very chill. Like, yeah, this happened. It's no big deal. But I mean, it's like she's been in my favorite store, Anthropology. And for those of you guys who know me, I love anthropology. Yes, the stuff is like way overpriced, but I love it because they're one of the few places that have like trendy kind of boho chic clothes that actually run tall. Another thing too is I just I just love everything about them. I love the patterns they carry. Like they just have Um, such and just a good eye for different products. So I have a lot of friends that are like, oh my God, but it's so expensive. But for me, I will save my little pennies and I will buy everything in that store. I love them. So anywho, to have Kendra, who um, has achieved like one of my dreams, because I swear one day, you guys, I am going to have a product in anthropology. You guys already know that I make stuff over at Creative Route. Like I'm going to pitch something to them. Okay. (laughs) But she's kind of like living the dream to me, at least, of of being able to say that she had like one of her patterns to be on their product, which I think is really cool. She's also been at Urban Outfitters. She's done stuff for Style Club and Bobby Brown Cosmetics. And so, but she's pretty like very humble, very chill about the whole thing. And um, she really kind of tells the story about how, you know, basically it took years. She wasn't this kind of like overnight success. She just worked hard at it every single day and things happened. And I think that we need to hear that sometimes because we see all these um, celebrities or artists or business people, whatever. And it seems like they um, are just like, they've just made money overnight. Like one day somebody discovered them and boom, they're making all this money. When in actuality, um, most of them kind of like Kendra, you know, might have struggled for years or worked in jobs they didn't really want and, you know, kind of hustled here and there and just continue to work on their craft until one day, which could have been years later, that they were either discovered or or whatever the story might be. So here she just kind of gives um, us a little bit of insight into her story and how kind of just a little bit of patience, perseverance, and just really just uh, doing something every day eventually led, uh, her to get the exposure she needed in order to get, uh, all these different opportunities. So let me stop babbling on. You guys know how I get, um, and let's get to Kendra. Hello, Kendra, and welcome to the show. 
Hi, how are you? Good. Um, so I found you on Instagram, and I have a, a design or background in design, but it's interesting. I was never good at illustrating, so I think I'm, I've always been a little jealous of illustrators. <laughs> and I see like the beautiful, amazing work you do, and I'm like, man, I'm like, uh, I love to ask her like how she comes up with like those amazing concepts and patterns because I know it's just like a different way of thinking. I could do like basic illustrations, right? But like the things you do with incorporating colors and patterns is like on a whole different level. But uh, let's, uh, let's start from the beginning. Like, what was your story before you became like, you know, this well known illustrator? So I basically, I went to college for fashion merchandising, um, but I didn't really like it because the career paths were basically retail or like buying. There were a lot of people in my classes who wanted to own their own stores, their own boutiques, and people who wanted to do like buying and merchandising. And it was kind of like not as creative as I would have liked. Um, So I started taking graphic design classes in my last year of uh, college and then like afterwards I tried to be like a fake graphic designer it didn't really work out that well (laughs) because I didn't actually go like to full graphic design school so I was like kind of trying to fake it trying to show portfolios to like ad agencies and they were like looking at me like uh no this is terrible (laughs) (laughs) so Yeah, that did not work out. So I basically was stuck working retail for a while, like about five years out of school working retail. Mm. I would just draw when I got home and just like try to draw and just try to figure out how to get out of retail. Mm. But like having to get any more schooling because school at that point and at this point, I still feel like college was kind of a waste of time and money. Mm. So. I didn't want to have to go back to school for anything or like, yeah, have to add to any more debt. So I just kind of was just drawing and like posting work online and just trying to figure out what to do with um, with like the skills that I had and incorporate like art because I've always liked to draw. So it just took a while. <laughs> right <laughs> now did you did you start on instagram or were you did you start on like facebook like uh which platform did you just start to kind of put like your niche initial like illustrations out there to the world i usually i use tumblr a lot tumblr oh, and that's mm-hmm. where i still like kind of post a lot because it's it's like a built-in social media network so i use tumblr and then um i got a Facebook and I think Instagram can't forget when Instagram came like probably about four ish years ago, maybe Yeah, something like Instagram. That, yeah. yeah. And then I like heard about Instagram and I signed up and this started and it was like really slow and crappy for a while, but mm-hmm. like eventually it picked up. So yeah, it's social media has been really great. It's really good to like, just put your work out there. You don't have to, do too much you just like kind of post and post and like sometimes it it gets seen and then you get opportunities out of it well I think that's good to hear too because I think like a lot of people think you know you go on Instagram Pinterest or whatever and then you're like this overnight success and all of a sudden you have all these deals but um what they don't realize is like even though people might be successful right now, it might have taken them three years to get there, right? <laughs> yeah, it takes a while. It's you're definitely not going to get post something and wake up and like have like tons of emails in your inbox. Like it's it takes a little while. Some people maybe depending on what they do, maybe it's faster than others, but it definitely takes a while. And so, how long did it take you to um, like find your style? Um, probably about like three-ish years or so. And then, like, once you found found your style, you started kind of posting more online. When did you start to see it take off? Like, was there, you know, like a significant event? Like, you entered a competition? Or did it just, like, slowly, you slowly just became more popular and then eventually, like, somebody reached out to you? It's just, like, kind of slow, slow over time, just, like, it's not, it's definitely nothing like really super huge or fast. I mean, one day, like I got an email from anthropology, which was really cool. 
um, because I always wanted to work with that company. And it was like, you can't really, the way it's set up is that you can't really like find someone in corporate's email and like show your work because it's just like really not on the website. So I guess they reach out to people that they want to work with. So that was really cool to to um to get yeah i saw that you did it was a couple of years ago but like uh, a meet the maker on you because i i mean when i tell you like anthropology is like a really expensive bad addiction addiction but i like love everything about that story <laughs> um but i saw that they like did a feature on you so that had to be amazing and just that exposure right there probably was like kind of a tipping point a little bit in your career yeah, that was that was really great. And then I've done since then I did like a couple more things with them. So that was that was really good to build like kind of a working relationship with them. So how does that work? Like um, because you actually uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, did you do um, like some illustrations for like some products? Like I, I think it was like some lip stuff or something they were trying to put out like. Um, like, but how did you, uh, like work with them? Like, how is that relationship? They're, they're actually, they're pretty great to work with. They're, um, they're really, they're really nice and they're really easy going. Um, the, the first thing was the lip, the lip tents they did. And I think after they did the ones with me, they did some with a couple of other artists. I guess they turned it into like an artist series, Mm. but, um. Yeah, it's really, really great. They picked a few of my designs that they wanted to use for that. So I had like a strawberries design of like a flamingos design and I uh, forget what the other one was. Um, I did that and then I did like a group of perfumes. So they selected some of my other designs for like limited edition little perfume scents. And I think since then they also used other artists. So maybe they're doing like different artists each time they come out with other scents and those little perfumes. Um, so yeah, it's really, really good to work with them. And so how is that adjustment? So I don't know if at the time you were still um, working retail or not, but you know, I can only imagine like you're working retail and anthropology like sends you an email. But at that point, did you even have like, oh, a contract or what my rates are? Or did you just have to like figure it all out kind of on the fly? Well, they actually, anthropology, they actually like have, some, place, some places have like what they pay people and some places ask you what your rates are. Right. So they have like what they pay you. I was okay. still at that point. Uh, I think I quit soon after just because I was just really, really, really hated my job. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I'm going to give this a try. It's now or never. So I'm just going to do it. Good for you. <laughs> I'm like, I, I can't stand this place. So, right. Well, then, well, after you had, like, that exposure with anthropology, like, what was next? Like, you quit your job. You're like, okay, I've got anthro behind me. My stuff is in anthro, which is, like, pretty amazing. Um, like, how did you get other gigs? Uh, just mostly through, like, just, like, posting and, like, people saw stuff from anthropology. And I, like, just tried to... Just put as much out there as possible um, to try to do any kind of pick up, like basically any kind of work that I could because I didn't really have that much money. But like I was just trying to do whatever, whatever was possible to uh, to like keep it going until the next thing. And what are some of the other brands that you've worked with? Um, I actually did a a little like candle uh, with Urban Outfitters and I like was in Urban Outfitters in New York about, like, last month, and I still sell it there, so that's really cool. Um, mm-hmm. I work with the Style Club. There's a, they're, like, a brand on uh, Instagram, and they have that cap that's also sort of sold at Urban Outfitters. It has, like, the Babe, that mm-hmm. Babe cap, and mm-hmm. that's that's basically, that's my, basically my handwriting with um, eyelashes, so it's on that cap. I did an eye design for Bobby Brown for their eye opening mascara. Oh, cool. Yeah, that was really cool. I got the email from them and they said that Bobby Brown herself saw my Instagram. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, Bobby Brown actually liked my work. That's (laughs) So, I mean, that's pretty cool. I'm really glad. And I also ended up doing a three month residency at printed village in boston like uh, mm. two years ago so i moved up there for a few months and i worked on a bunch of products like scarves and like 
tote bags and stuff, um, did designs for them. Mm. Um, so that was really cool to like do a, do like an actual work residency for a company, even though I do prefer to work for myself. I definitely learned that. Um, but it was cool to like do to actually, cause I've never had a, a job, I guess with in, in my field. So that was the oh, first time right. actually, like our actual real job in my field. Mm. I definitely prefer to work freelance though, but it was good to actually have that experience. You sell your own products too, correct? I mean, I've tried. It's not really, they don't really sell. (laughs) (laughs) Like I've had some pins before and I have like a patch that people aren't really buying. So I don't think I'm going to bother with those anymore just because they're, they, I mean, they cost money to make, and I'm not going right. like, to keep spending money. And most of the most of the stuff on my site is just like selling original drawings and stuff like that. So, just originals, and I still have those patches. And I don't know if I if I do like painted painted stuff. I just got a couple of blank canvas zipper totes that I'm going to paint see like what they look like and maybe I'll put them up for sale if people are interested. Now how do you like um, Society6? Because I know a lot of artists are starting to use that now because at least with that you don't have to buy you know like 200 uh, pins or whatever and hope they sell like it's like print on demand. Uh, Have you found any success with them? Yeah I mean like it's pretty it's I mean I would not expect to get like a ton of sales unless you like kind of do a really popular genre of like artwork if you do just kind of like pop culture references and like put that on stuff then people love that it's a pretty good just way to just have passive income and if people ask you for like phone cases or like i want you know a laptop skin or whatever with your artwork on it and you don't have to produce it you can just like direct them to that page and then they can buy the stuff and you get like a portion of it so it's just like kind of low involvement, passive income. And then I also I wanted to get back to something you said about like loving to work for yourself. I think like with some people, you know, that scares them a little bit because it, when you're not working for someone, that means like you have to like go out, kind of find clients and pitch yourself. So what's kind of your process in doing that? Like, I know some people just discover you because you're popular on places like Instagram, but do you also have like a uh, kind of a process for like pitching uh, potential customers or clients? Um, I'm mostly, I haven't been really that great at like pitching. Mm-hmm. I've just kind of let people find me, but I should probably get more into doing pitching just because it's always good to have, because you never know with freelance stuff, it's like really kind of up in the air. So it's probably should be good on me to like actually just get better at finding brands to want to work with and maybe doing more collaborations. Um, But I've just basically kind of let people come to me so far. Mm -hmm. So in the future, I'll pitch more. But I mean, that's like pretty amazing, though, that that you don't have to, like it's a choice, right? <laughs> because like I feel like with some people, it's like if they're not pitching, they're not eating. Right. Um, yeah. But you uh, kind of you've made a name for yourself to the point where, you know, people are going to find you and come to you. So that's, I think, pretty cool. Yeah, it's like the the thing is like. I need more like paid gigs because a lot of people come looking for like free uses and it's like not as so if I really want to get more like definitely specifically paid gigs, I have to like get better at pitching. So even if even if like I might be getting sort of popular, I still have to like put myself out there. And then on Instagram, so for the listeners out there, she has like 27,000 followers. That's like a ton of followers. Most of us, you know, are just, you know, hoping to get to a thousand, right? So how were you able to do that? Was it kind of getting into Instagram early and then it just kind of worked itself out? Or were there things you did in order to help yourself, like, get more exposure on that platform? Um, I don't think I did anything too special. Like, I just kept doing, um, I just kept posting a lot, and then maybe somebody might repost it with a lot more followers than I had, and then got more followers from that. And if you, like, have some 
products or a collaboration with a brand coming out, then if they repost it, then you get more followers. And it just kind of like grew organically. Well, I see you like on, you know, all of your pictures, you at least have like kind of your name like embedded. Do you find now that you're so popular and everyone's reposting your artwork that you have to do that, you know, just to make sure like, it's like, hey, this came from here. Cause I feel like a lot of times people just take artists work and just use it as their own sometimes. Yeah, I definitely got in the habit of doing the watermark just because people like repost a lot without crediting and they just like, they just don't care. I don't know, it's just like people think that just because people put their artwork online that it's free and that they can just do whatever they want or, or something. There's like a lot of accounts, I'm not trying to call anybody out, but there's like <laughs> so, certain types of accounts that like to do that or like to use my work as like a background. Um, as, and then they put like their ad, they're basically advertising their business with my artwork in the background and then they put their watermark on it and it's just kind Oh, of, wow. Yeah, it's like, that doesn't belong to you, though. <laughs> right, wow. So, yeah, I definitely have the habit of putting my watermark on stuff, because sometimes I've even had, like, really large accounts post it with no credit whatsoever. They just post it. That is know. so it's, crazy. It's, it's irritating. <laughs> it's just, like, proper crediting. It's not. It's not difficult. So, I don't know. And then um, how did you, like, get your inspiration? Because, like, I could totally see your um, your style in anthropology because just, like, the colors and the style. It almost has, like, this vintage feel. But you have, like, a million different patterns. So, like, how do you draw your inspirations for colors and what you're going to illustrate? Like, what's your kind of, like, I guess, artistic process? Um, I just doodle a lot of stuff. I just basically do what I want to do. <laughs> put together things that even if I think they might be kind of dumb, but like I just do it anyway. Mm. So I just do whatever I want. I always, I like vintage stuff. So I do go like thrift shopping a lot and look around and I like vintage things. I like makeup and beauty stuff. So I just like combine all things that I like and just put them together. And then what's your process? Like, is that like, um, you know, after you doodle, like as far as the coloring, are you, is it like paint, you know, is it collaging? Like, cause your, your images have like a lot of texture to it. So I'm just curious, like what type of mediums you use? Um, a lot of times I use markers, watercolors, acrylic paints, like mixed media, um, for a lot of things. Um, I recently got an iPad pro. So I yeah, use like yeah. I've been some of the prints I've been using like the Adobe Sketch app, and they basically have kind of realistic paint brushes. Like mm. their acrylic paint brush looks like real acrylic paint, and it's really cool. So like it's just been an easier way of maybe if I'm traveling and if I still have to do a deadline, which I had to do fairly recently, and I can just use that till like, I get some work done, so it's less for me to do when I have to get home. Yeah, because I'm like, this is so much, because it's like, how do you even, like, catalog all of this? Or do you just have, like, stacks and stacks of, like, sketchbooks and, like, files, and then the ones that seem like they're popular, you'll, like, sell them? Like, what kind of, what's your process of organizing so many different types of patterns? I just have sketchbooks of um, the drawings and... I just have a file on my computer, a Dropbox. And then whatever you need, you'll just kind of grab it and then figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Now, when you're working with places like Anthropology, do you have like kind of a, I don't know if it'd be called like a lookbook, but do you have like kind of like this catalog you give to them or do you do they just go on places like Tumblr and Instagram and say like, we like this? Um, they basically said that they they basically show me the the ones that they want to use. So like they basically um, picked the designs that they wanted. And do you ever have uh, get the opportunity? Like, does has anyone ever I guess came to you to like commission like a portrait of them or like custom artwork for galleries or anything like that? I've never done any portraits or like artwork for galleries. I mean, I would I would like mm -hmm. to do that, but um. Yeah, that would be cool in the future. 
And so, like, what's kind of next for you? Um, like, what are some of the things, like, even this year you'd love to, like, get into? Or where would you like to, like, see your art? Um, I would like to, I really like beauty stuff. So I would definitely like to do more um, beauty type things. I really like fashion illustration, too. So I would like to do more of that. Maybe do, like, a, an event or a pop-up or, you know, some kind of traveling work event that would be really cool yeah basically more things like that i would definitely love to do kind of like events and like go go places for art and and do you have any advice for because you know there's somewhere else they're like working in retail or like at a fast food place or somewhere you know and they might be hating life not to say the jobs are bad for the listeners out there if you're working at <laughs> but you know but they know like they're supposed to be doing more or they're like doodling in their sketchbook too and they're like man I just want to get my art out there like do you have any advice for them yeah you just have to do it there's, <laughs> right? like, no, there's like no there is no fairy godmother you just have to do it like I didn't I I hated life when I worked retail I was not a fan so, like, when I got home, I just, that's just what I did. I acted like I wanted to do it. And I just did. Yeah, I mean, I just think it's amazing because really it's, um, and let me know if I'm wrong, but it was really just you doing it and then just putting it out there, like, on Tumblr, then Instagram and wherever else. And then it's like people will find you. Like, the more, I guess, you put yourself out there, uh, the easier you'll be discovered. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, you're you're not going to attract anybody if you just keep it in your sketchbook. So you have to, like, put it out there and keep keep working at it. Like, every day, if that's, that's drawing and art is your craft, you have to, like, work on your craft in order to get better and, like, keep at it. Well, kudos to you because I think you're an example of I, – because I, I think sometimes people are told, like, you can't support yourself with art. And unfortunately, I feel like young children are always told that, too. Like, if they they say they want to be an artist, it's like, well, that's a cute little hobby. You know, do something yeah. else and do that on the side. But I think you're a great example of, like, you know, this is your career. Yeah, times are, yeah, definitely now, especially with the age of social media and the Internet. Like, it's a lot easier now than any other time in the past. Like, you don't even have to lug around a huge portfolio. You can just, like... Use your Instagram and like everything. Like you, you could just use all your social media platforms. You're now is the best time. You're not in the fifties. You don't have to right. like mail a portfolio. Well, I just have two uh, wrap up questions. I asked each guest. Um, one, the first one is, um, have you found your passion? And it doesn't necessarily have to be illustration, right? It could be you know cooking or like a sport or whatever. Um, but if you found your passion, like what do you do to, I guess, um, keep it up and make sure like you make time for it. And if you haven't found like your passion, like what are you doing in order to like figure out what it is? I have actually found the passion. I do, uh, swing dancing, uh, Lindy hop, um, and Balboa and, uh, basically vernacular soul jazz dancing. So, like, oh, I just wow. go to social dances and, like, I travel a lot for dancing. Mm. I need to travel more for working, but I travel <laughs> to go to dance. I spend money on going to dances <laughs> right. across the country, which I need to pick up some gigs while I'm there. But, um, yeah, so I just go and travel and I listen to I DJ jazz music at the, at the social dances. So I just listen to a lot of music and I dance a lot. So that's kind of what I do outside of uh, art. Oh, no, that sounds really cool. Yeah. Um, and, and I feel like if, you know, because, you know, we already talked like your art has a vintage uh, feel to it. So I feel like swing dancing just like fits right into it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like cool. really good. Yeah, it's really good. And you know, like it's a good nod to culture, to African-American culture in the past. It's basically... The, it was the street dance of African Americans in the 30s and 40s. So it's good to like go back to our culture and really keep something that was ours alive. Amazing. 
And then what is one thing that you cannot live without? And it could be anything, a product, uh, anything. Um, I am probably all about my phone so I can like look at memes and look at Instagram and <laughs> yeah. Memes. Are you iPhone or Android? Uh, iPhone. Okay. <laughs> For now until they like make, I just got the, the SE like until they like force you to have those wireless headphones. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. That's why I got the SE instead of the seven, because that's really annoying. I don't want to have to be forced to get different headphones. Yeah. I know they're taking a gamble with that one. Yeah. I'm not into it. <laughs> well, cool. Well, I thank you so much for being on the show. Um, I feel like you'll be an inspiration for those out there. And then even for people who have kids that want to be artists, like this is just like, I think a wake up call for them, like, Hey, support your kids because one day they can grow up and like do something they love and make a career out of it. So thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right, you guys, I'd love to hear what you guys thought of that episode. Just to wrap up here, you know, it's so funny. The quote that I'm going to make a quote card out of is when she says, yeah, you just have to do it. There is no fairy godmother. You just have to do it. And I think that is so powerful because sometimes people do think it's somehow magical that all of a sudden everything will take off and you're going to make all this money. And it's like, no, you just got to kind of put in the work, you know, and things will then happen. And so I, I think that's great advice that that she's given us. And I mentioned in the beginning, like, she's, like, very humble because there's some things we didn't even get into. Like, she has a license deal with Vans Shoes. And I believe she has, like, three patterns that are being sold on the Vans website. And I'll put a link in the show notes. And then we also talk about um, about pitching you know, ourselves. And I'm kind of bad at this too. Like I'm kind of the person that just likes to do the work. I want to just edit my podcast or write my blog articles. And sometimes I forget like, oh, actually no one will hear my podcast or see my articles if I don't put it out there in the world, if I don't email people and tell people I'm here. And so I feel like artists, business folks, whoever, we forget to do that. Um, And no matter how big you get, you still need to make sure that you know, people know about you and your services and you're pitching like customers, brands or whatever that you want. And so that's just a reminder to you to do that. And it's so funny. Let's say if you don't even have your business, let's say if you're in a corporate job and you still need to be pitching yourself, you still need to be reaching out to people that um, could help you get maybe the opportunities that you want. So that can be applied in many different ways and many different professions. But yeah, so I was saying like how she's like, you know, very humble and some things we didn't even get to, which I'll have a link in the show notes is she has a coloring book that she sells on Amazon. And even though she's not pitching herself, she has her stuff on several, like her patterns on in several different places. Not only does she have it in Society6, kind of like um, Elena, if you guys remember her, definitely check out her episode, which was a cool one too. She also has... Um, her designs in Chasing Paper, where um, they sell wallpaper. So you can get her designs on wallpaper. I think you pronounce it Paom, P-A-O-M, her designs on clothes and bags. You can get her patterns on fabric at robertkaufman.com. And then she also has her patterns on Case Station. And so if you're looking to buy her patterns, you can go there. And But if you're an artist that sells patterns um, or other art that and you want to sell your stuff on different items, you know, check out some of these sites and then... Um, Um, you know, you just never know. You can see how you do Um, because most of those sites, I believe, are print on demand. So she is out there hustling in many different ways. And you'll see like the links to all the things that she mentioned and didn't mention. So she has done a really good job of putting herself out there, even though she admits that she could pitch and put herself out there a little bit more. But I, I say kudos to you, Kendra. You've done a really nice job. 
Anyway, I hope uh, that you guys found this interesting and inspirational. And until next week, uh, don't forget to please rate me. So if you go to Apple's podcast app, you can rate me there or, you know, you can go to nishesnow.com slash iTunes and um, you'll see the rating on the left hand side. Please rate me five stars. It helps people find the show. So um, if you could do that, I'd be forever grateful. If you could share this or any of the other episodes, that also helps a ton. And, um, you know, as I started this out and in January, I'm uh, continuing to build my newsletter list you know, so I can like send out more helpful information, tutorials, and so forth. Uh, so head on over to nishaysnow.com slash newsletter. So lots of stuff to do, right? <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys have an amazing morning, noon, and night, and I will talk to you again in a week. Bye.